exploit DB, Metasploit, Python code. How are we going to execute all that? So you found an exploit. You found it on a room on Try Hack Me. We're going to start the machine. It is called Bold. It's a typical machine that I'm demonstrating whenever I am finding something new to talk about because this room is just so easy to exploit and it got a really um, interesting, you know, pass with me. So that's why I kind of <laughs> choose that always. So let's assume that you now found an exploit on exploit DB. Let's choose this one here for this particular CMS called Bold CMS and the version fits. Now I know this exploit will work and I already copy pasted it to a file and Basically, what you're gonna find out now is that no matter which kind of you know exploit you're gonna execute, um, there are different exploits that does the same, right? So the one here on uh, exploit DB, it's a um, proof of concept. It is not a hundred percent working in the term of you're getting a bulletproof shell, but you are getting uh, authenticated remote code execution. So let's go ahead and see if the room is ready. And it only got like five seconds still. So let's go ahead and go to the tab here. I prepared the bold exploit.py inside this Python file here, which is directly copy pasted from the exploit DB. Now, if I take this and I do Python 3, and we do bold exploit.py and we do http dash um, 10 10 161 and we do bold and bold admin123 now remember this is an, this is an uh, authenticated exploit so you need to be authenticated it is written in the top you need to provide username and password and why do you know that? Well, basically, I, I read the code. It says usage. You got to call the script. They gave it bold.py, but you can basically give it any name, URL, username, password. That's it. You're going to, you know, execute it. And and uh, let's see, we are forgetting it's running on port 8000. So I'm going to put that 8000 to the port. And now it's retrieving the cross site request for your token to submit the login form. And in just a small second, we're gonna get a shell, another shell where we can execute commands. And you can see that there is some uh, test files and an index file and the working directory is this current working directory. What you could do is probably say cat etc password D and you have all the there's a root user, sure. So you can probably also etc shadow and get all the passwords and then you can probably go ahead and yeah, you cannot do that. But you can probably do it with the bold. So the, there is a hash right here. You can try and brute force and yeah, then you could probably get access to the machine. Anyways, this was one of the shells. I haven't discovered how much I can use this shell for, you know, just execute. Well, you, you can see that I can ex execute commands. I can read files. I can say output test 26.php and then I get some, what that was inside of that. It looks like some, some sort of object, you know, I don't know what this looks like right now. It, it looks like a session, you know, I don't know. It's proton mail. Yeah, this looks like a, some sort of object. You know, it doesn't really matter because I just wanted to show you how to execute. But <clears throat> so, so you're, you're not happy with this shell. I understand that. Then I found another shell on the internet and basically it's another shell written for uh, bold. It's called bold exploit. Um, let me just copy paste the link in this browser here. And I just did some research and someone made an exploit for this. And I, I, I looked at it and says, well, this is also Python three and 
This is another script. This is exactly the same way. Whenever you find an exploit somewhere, you want to execute that. This is just Python code. This is also just Python code. I really care if it's on a blue or yellow or purple background. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's just taking the script, you know, taking the script. So I, I took this script here and it looks a little more fancy, I would say. Not really sure. It does look really fancy. Um, and and basically it got some commands. You know, we can write exit, we can write one, and then we get the um, reverse shell connection something going on. And yeah, it, it's it's gonna execute a reverse shell that we can find on pentest monkey, which is whoops, which is the one we have. Uh, let's just see. I think it's this one here, which is the 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 bash uh, sh uh, shell reverse uh, shell. Yeah. So I took this script and basically I saved it the same place. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the exact same uh, exploit. Same. It's called number two instead of number instead of nothing. The same path, same IP, same name, everything. Let's see if this work. Uh, yeah, I need to um, I need to restart the room because with this exploit, it's gonna it's gonna require a restart, and that's how it is sometimes when you do exploits. You basically need to restart the room in order for 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 it to to work for you probably. But this is a really good way for us to learn and verify our results. So I'm gonna pause the video for 50 seconds and get back pretty soon. So the IP is up. It's 10.10.12332. 10, Let's go ahead and just take the windows, not that one. No, still the same. They look the same. Let's change the IP. It's um, one, two, three, thirty-two, and this is because I'm gonna create a reverse listener now. When you do a netcat listening on port five 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 five, basically you are listening to any connection trying to you know connect to your machine on this port. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open a reverse shell now. Using this exploit, I found it's, it's the same exploit, just a different person who made it. Made it a bit more hmm, beautiful, I, I would say. Let's just start it one more time. And you see that it's uh, locking in, giving us a shell, and it looks a bit more intuitive now, right? So now we can, you know, write commands and stuff, and it do give us the possibility to open a reverse shell by typing in the option one. So let's do, just do that. Let's type one, the L host, that's me, so my IP address to one and port 5555. And you see over the side here that we're getting a connection back. I'm gonna type ID, we are root. And basically, it seems like we got our shell, it says, and now we have another shell running. And some would argue this is a more stable shell, but you know, we, you do not have tab auto completion. You cannot press up and down, and this is just a very basic shell. In order to for you to spawn a better shell, you need to run a Python script. So let's see. Do we have Python installed? Uh, it doesn't seem like. So let's uh, try and execute this again. And. Type one, ten, eleven, zero, to one, five, 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 five. The start netcat listener executed. We got our shell, and if we have Python this machine, I could execute a script just like this here, and then upgrade my shell. And now you see that I have upgraded my shell a bit. I can do, you know, I can see more like. A normal Linux command prompt, and whoops, and and by that I have a possibility to to gain you know better better view. I'm already root, so no reason to you know do anything more about that.
All right, so let's exit this and exit one more time. We are out of the shell. The script has been executed. This is how you use scripts from ExploitDB. I even found another script, you know, just lying around and it's just, you know, giving me a, a better shell. And it does seem that it's, it's possible to do reverse shell. If you wanna reverse engineer this, you can look at the code and and basically um, try to do exactly the same thing. And it does seem like you need to. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you need to do a, a standard reverse shell. You can find that on Pentest Monkey, which is one of the better sites. So Pentest Monkey, and then do reverse shell cheat sheet. Then you have all the different kinds of bash, Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby, Netcat, Java, Xterm, and so on. And the one that was chosen here was the Netcat version, the two different kinds, basically. And I guess that's it. This is how you use ExploitDB. It's different from script to script, but you know, showcasing something is, uh, of course, something that I would like to do. So if you like this video, please subscribe, consider liking the channel, the video, of course, leave a comment below. So take care.